Hello, my name is Eric Richter and I'm from the Department of Nutrition, Exercise and Sports at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark and it's my pleasure to introduce to you the reports from the symposium entitled Novel Regulatory Mechanisms in Muscle Metabolism During Exercise which was held at the Physiological Society meeting in London in July 2014. So skeletal muscle is the largest organ in the body, and in addition to its obvious role in movement, skeletal muscle has important roles in glucose and lipid metabolism. And this series of reviews focuses on the novel aspects of molecular regulation in muscle during contraction or exercise. Contracting skeletal muscle rapidly increases glucose transport driven by translocation of the GLUT4 glucose transporter to the plasma membrane. And for a number of years, the contraction signaling to GLUT4 translocation has been thought to consist of feedforward calcium stimulated GLUT4 translocation combined with metabolic feedback signals. In their review, Thomas Jensen and co workers critically examined the role of calcium as feedforward regulator of glucose uptake in skeleton muscle. The paper highlights recent findings suggesting that increased myoplasmic calcium concentration by itself does not increase glucose transport, but rather initiates a cascade such as activation of AMP kinase and mechanical stretch of the sarcolemma that leads to increased glucose transport. In their review, Sulo and co-workers provide evidence for an important role of the GTPase RAG1 in contraction-induced muscle glucose uptake. Until recently, RAG1 was known only to facilitate insulin-stimulated glucose transport in skeletal muscle, but interestingly, RAG1 is activated also by muscle contractions, and this is in an AMP kinase-independent manner. But stretch of the plasma membrane seems to be important for RAG1 activation. Recent studies link RAG1 to the actin cytoskeleton, the small GTPase rel A and or free radical production, all of which were shown previously to modulate glucose transport in muscle. It will be intriguing to know the full role of REC1. Nitric oxide production increases during exercise, and studies from Glenn McConnell's lab have shown that inhibition of the NO synthesizing enzyme nitric oxide synthase, also known as NOS, decreases leg glucose uptake during exercise in both healthy and type 2 diabetic subjects, independently of blood flow. The molecular mechanisms that lead to increased muscle in NOS activity and NO production during exercise and the downstream signaling resulting in increased muscle glucose uptake are, however, not understood. In the review by Hong and McConnell, the effect of NO on glucose uptake in muscle during exercise is discussed, and they conclude that current evidence suggests that NO plays an important role in skeletal muscle glucose uptake during contraction and exercise, but the source of the NO and the downstream mechanisms involved are still mostly unresolved. During exercise, utilization of both long-chain fatty acids and triglycerides in muscle is dramatically increased. Transport of long-chain fatty acids across the plasma membrane and skeletal muscle involves a protein-mediated mechanism, and fat CD36 seems to be the most important protein. Jordi and Keynes discuss in their review the molecular mechanisms that are thought to regulate fat CD36 translocation to the cell membrane. Intramuscular triglycerides are also mobilized during prolonged exercise and interestingly seem to be a more important fuel in females than in males, perhaps because of the larger stores in females compared to male muscles. Georgia and Keynes also discussed the molecular regulation of, I, of intramuscular triglyceride breakdown during exercise via adipose triglyceride lipase, also known as ATGL. ATGL appears to be the important regulator of triglyceride breakdown whereas hormone-sensitive lipase, HSL, likely serves as a diacylglycerol lipase. As indicated above, AMP kinase is involved in regulation of glucose uptake in muscle, both at rest and during contractions. Marcinko and Steinberg, in their review, examined the role of AMP kinase in regulation of lipid metabolism in muscle at rest and during exercise. 
and whereas there is considerable support for a regulatory role of AMP kinase in resting muscle lipid oxidation through phosphorylation and inactivation of the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase 2 or ACC2, Marcinko and Steinberg describe that a similar role of AMP kinase and ACC in regulating lipid oxidation in muscle during exercise is not evidence. However, they find that AMP kinase appears to have an important role in mitochondrial adaptation to repeated exercise training. So, whereas much has been learned about the molecular pathways involved in regulation of substrate metabolism in muscle during exercise and contraction, it has also become clear that muscle metabolism is regulated by an extremely intricate interplay between many molecular pathways, substrates availability as well as exercise, intensity and mode. But since elucidating the molecular pathways governing muscle metabolism will be necessary for understanding some of the health aspects of physical activity, advances in molecular understanding may also have a pharmacological potential in terms of treatment of inactivity-related lifestyle diseases. Thank you very much for your attention.